midday, Salt Lake City, Rice Eccles Stadium. The pig farmer returns. Now he's going to be facing a little bit of a tougher defense. Oregon going into Utah. The Ducks are six and a half point road favorites over under around 48 or so. Uh, Tom, what's, where do you start picking this game apart in terms of the, the matchup between Oregon and Utah? First, I want to make an amendment. I realized I said that I think Florida's front seven is better than Georgia's. I didn't mean that. I meant I think Sap and what's his name could start for Georgia. I don't think the entire front seven is better. Um, as they're for already this, clipping it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm sure but as long as it's on the record and our listeners know. Um, this, to me, like, <laughs> Utah's not going to have the same offensive performance it had against USC, right? Like, it's nice. facing a much better defense this week. So it's going to be, can Utah, like, to me, this matchup is going to come down to Utah more than anything and how Utah performs. Because I think Oregon's going to go out there and do what Oregon does. I think they're going to be fine. But can Utah force negative plays in this game on defense? Because if you look, it's an interesting matchup in that the Utes rank third nationally in negative plays forced at 41.9%. Oregon's third nationally on offense as far as negative play rate at only 20.3%. So that's going to be a very interesting matchup between Utah's front and Oregon's offensive line. And we have seen all year long, Oregon's offensive line is very good in the run game. They open up lanes, they create room. And then in the passing game, Oregon and Bo Nix get the ball out really quickly. So it is hard to force those negative plays. And Utah's defense is very reliant on them. Because if you look further into the numbers, like they're not great once you get past the line of scrimmage. You can really run the ball pretty well against this Utah team, particularly on the interior where their defensive line, to me, meh. Oregon's offensive line on the interior, eh, hey, very good. So, like, can Utah stop Bucky Irving? Utah ranks 51st in defensive success rate against the run. And Oregon really does a great job of running in the A-gaps, which, again, is where Utah struggles to stop the run and get, you know, stuff. So Bucky Irving should have a pretty big game in this one. And I think that, like, what's his name? Oh, Johnny Cornelius, their right tackle. The most fun matchup for me is going to be Cornelius, Oregon's right tackle against Utah's Jonah Ellis, who is an absolute stud for them on the edge. They're going to put him on the right because I think they're going to – that's where he normally lines up. Maybe they move him to the left because they feel that Oregon's left tackle is a bit more vulnerable. But he's going to have to have a huge day for the Utes if they are going to slow this Oregon offense down and be able to keep themselves in the game because no disrespect to the pig farmer, Bryson Barnes, who had the great game and hopefully Oregon was able to see that he could run the ball on tape this week. But – I just don't think what we saw last week against USC is a true indication of what this Utah offense is. I still think this is a pretty limited offense that against an Oregon defense, which I think is pretty good, they're going to struggle to move the ball effectively. They need to keep this low scoring. They need to keep this rock fighty. But what works to their benefit is this game is at home. So they'll have that they'll have that advantage behind them. They'll have the crowd behind them. It will make things difficult for Oregon because as we saw, like, Oregon kind of struggled at times with the crowd noise in Seattle. They could have a very similar situation in Salt Lake City. So that's going to be something they need to take advantage of. And they're going to have to force turnovers. But that's the other problem, too. Oregon doesn't turn the ball over. So the more I look at this game, it's like I don't think Utah doesn't have a shot to win because they're at home. And they're very, 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 very good at home. But I just don't think this is a good matchup for the Utes at all. How much signal can we derive from the last two games that Utah's offense has played? Right? Like, to me, that's the key question we have to ask here because they have played Cal defense, which has just been collapsing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They have played USC, which isn't collapsing because you'd have to start somewhere to collapse from, and they just haven't played any defense all year. Oregon, are they getting the guys back who they held out last week against Washington State? The guys who got hurt in the Washington game. Because if they're not, I, I could see this being a game. If they get them back, I think they can play some pretty aggressive coverage. And then in that case, I think Utah's offense probably looks a lot more like it looked against Florida, Baylor, and UCLA. And to Tom's point, like, yeah, they don't really turn it over. Nix is like Nix is about to set the record, I think, for the most games started in the history of college football. Like, that's a veteran dude. He's old. He probably has a 401k. 
it's not that Utah can't go out and take it because they can, but there have been situations this year where they feasted on opponents who made really dumb mistakes. You know, Dante Moore throwing the pick six literally to open the game. Mm -hmm. Florida committing a million false starts offsides and too many men on the field in critical situations. I, but man, like this is what a seven point spread, six and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, Utah is for my money, the biggest home field advantage in college football. It doesn't mean the loudest crowd, but like it play the number plays to it. That, that's saying that Oregon is like a 10 point better team on a neutral site. That's a lot of respect for Oregon. Like Utah is a good team. It just, I don't know. It may be the end of the road. Tom might be right for the top, really might be right on this. Well, success rate looks great when you're eight yards a play, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like the, and you know, when it's not moving through the air, when you've got Bucky Irving, Jordan James, like that, and they got a lot of things moving in the right directions. I understand why the power rating on the Ducks is going to be, you know, definitely among the higher in the probably higher than a lot of people would realize compared to where they sit in the AP poll. Boy, this is a lot of disrespect towards Kyle Whittingham. That he's I know, 29 I'm so, I am out of terrified. 30. Yeah. 29 <laughs> out of his last 30 in Rice Eccles. Um, you mentioned it's I think we should see a really clean game. Like you mentioned, Utah, you know, getting some force. So Oregon has one turnover on the season. Utah has four. <laughs> like they're two of the like that's insane that we're all yes. like we're almost in November and Oregon's only turned it off once. The good thing about Utah, they've only turned it over four times. They're still they're not, they're third in the country in turnovers. So they're both of these teams are kind of playing very true. I think that's a huge Bo Nix impact. Like veteran quarterback knows he's not going to make the big mistake. It's also a credit to Bucky Irving and everybody who carries the ball as well. But Utah plays right into their identity. Um, I think this is a Kyle Whittingham special where you try to you try to run the football, you stay committed to Quinton Jackson, you let Bar uh, Bryson Barnes. By the way, you mentioned it, Bud. The last two games now they're starting to utilize his legs a little bit more. They're starting to realize, oh, we don't we don't need to go to Nate Johnson to bring him in to try to run the football. Let's just run our system with Bryson Barnes. He's coming off his best rushing and passing performance of the year. I, I think this game's going to be really, really physical. I think it's going to be interesting, and I think this is when we find out. Like, if Oregon wins and covers, it's like an emphatic, all right, this team – this because I – even after watching the Washington-Oregon game, I kind of liked Oregon in a rematch. Like, man, I can't wait to get there. I hope they're a dog against Washington and Vegas in the big tw uh, Pac-12 championship game. I think they'd win a rematch. Then I go watch this one. I'm like, well, they got to get through this one first. Bo Nix on the road. He was fine. It wasn't his fault against Washington. But this is a tough environment. Also, uh, last year in this matchup, they picked off Cam Rising three times. Like, I don't mm -hmm. think they'll subject, like Bryson Barnes, I don't think he's going to make that many mistakes either. I, I'm you glad know? you mentioned last year because that's one thing that stood out to me because they're, you know, the question is like, would. Oregon be ready to play a Utah style of game. They won a Utah style of game 20 to 17 last year, leaning on the defense, playing a little bit of a rock fight. It, it is for Dan Lanning and his staff and the returning players from that Ducks team, something that they are comfortable doing. And they have that experience of being able to beat Utah in a Utah style game. The problem being that was Eugene. And this is Rice Eccles Stadium where we are just disrespecting Utah and their incredible home field advantage time and time again. Going back to your point on turnovers, Danny, <clears throat> you mentioned how it's remarkable that Oregon only has one and Utah has four at this point of the season. You know what makes it more remarkable? Utah's lost one fumble this year. Do you know how many times Utah's fumbled? Ten times. Wow. So it's mostly been fumble luck for the Utes. It's not like you can't force the turnover. They have dropped the ball. They have just been extremely good or lucky, whatever you want to prefer to get back on the ball. So like this is a team, they do put the ball in, at, at risk. But if you're not in the open field and you fumble, then a teammate's probably nearby. 